Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to paint hair and fur. Um, the first thing you gotta do always when you're going to paint something is look, to look for references. Uh, in this case we're going to look for pictures uh, about hair and we, you can use videos, you can use uh, Google, you can use whatever you want. Books and for a start I want to explain a technique that is called um, three point light technique so we have a key light that is, it will be the strongest source of light in the scene we have a field light that is going to be um, it can be a soft box in real life it's, a, it's like a box with a light inside and so the light comes out a little bit um, diffuse and we have a backlight that is that light that creates some kind of rim in the in the edge of the character or the shape that we are looking at um, so we have a key light a fill light and we have a backlight that's the three point uh, lighting technique okay so here I have a, a few pictures uh, that I use as reference to explain you um, how how the hair looks when you have a strong backlight, um, you should have like a like a edge of light on the hair. Uh, what's happening in that first picture is that the the light in the back is stronger than the than the one that is in the front of the of the person. So. Um, of course, there are a few other ingredient, ingredients like the exposure of the camera and stuff. But in 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 short words, the 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 backlight is stronger than than the key light there. Um, notice how uh, how the the light is on the edge of the of the person. And right now, what happened is that the little girl with the red hair um, plus the sunlight looks like orange um, so for creating a brush I need to create a brush to make this hair so for creating a brush you need to analyze what kind of shape you want with this with this brush um, here what I did is to show you now the difference between a boring <laughs> a boring brush and an interesting brush if you do all the spots at the same size and same opacity, it will look boring. And if you do it with different shapes, different opacity, and different position, it will it will look more interesting and realistic. What you want to do is is to create a brush that looks interesting. So uh, I'll create I create a brush, and after I got I after I got that. I push F5 and I can see all the properties on the on the brush and I, I start playing with that with the spacing um, try not to use uh, too little too little um, spacing because the less spacing that you use if you use like 1% will be really really heavy so I start playing with the with the brush and the properties. For example, there I use fade, and is perfect to use for fur or grass when you're doing grass. Um, but right now I'm I'm okay with the pen pressure. With with the pen pressure um, setting. So I I put my my backlight on and my key light. And I start right there. I'm I'm painting a little bit of fur, so I start with a panner with the brush I just I just created. I make a pattern for for a start, uh, kind of where the key light is. Right there, I'm using the same color but really saturated and and brighter to make the impression that I have a backlight. Uh, and I did that in a layer that was behind. 
uh, right there I'm just putting some some little little specular um, lines remember to use your palette always um, sometimes when I when I'm not sure what I'm going to do, I just paint in in a new layer, and then I can change the opacity on the layer and see different results with with little effort. Right there, I'm just adding some shadows between the the hairs to make it look less even. So what what you're supposed to be looking for is to define what kind of what kind of hair or fur are you are you making um, uh, it doesn't have to look perfect the the most perfect it looks it will look fake it's the same reason of what I what I did the brush that way with some points had uh, less opacity than others um, to paint long hair um I I I, ha, I always say this in the my tutorials. I don't I don't always know what I'm going to do. So I just try things. Um the best if if I could give you um an advice is never um fear trying things when you're painting because that way you can kind of create your own uh, your own techniques right there I'm just doing something for a start uh, when I got something for a start then I can start trying things <clears throat> you need a starting point so I, I just put a few um, some some specular color there I burn it a little bit with the O key there I kind of um, put some reflection on the hair the hair is kind of reflective and I use I use it gray to make that impression and with the same color with the same brown color really saturated and bright I created I make I make the um, the backlight always when you don't know how to, what to do, always check on your references. Uh, use it only for inspiration. Never copy and paste. Just for inspiration. See right there, I'm just making more detail with the other brush. At the beginning, I didn't use it for this one, but uh, I remember that I had it there, so there it is. Uh, and try to create some random lines because they how I say the hair hair is not perfect um, see right there I just created some lines and erased the the not sure how to call that the, the point of the lines um, the you will develop your own technique of making things this is just how uh, to show you how I will do it and I just hope you you like it um <clears throat> if you make the specular lighting that way uh, see that it, it starts stronger and then it, it fades a little bit it looks more interesting that if you do it uh, if you do it all of the same level so there I'm just trying to make this other one look interesting again so try to to do these these exercises um, when you have some time and with with time you can you can start start painting um, quicker um, faster and more accurate so this is it guys I hope you like this tutorial please remember to visit my facebook page um, uh, if you can follow me on Twitter, um, even that I all almost everything I say on Twitter is in Spanish, but you can also follow me, and I'll be posting these tutorials everywhere. So keep in touch. Thank you very much. This is it.